Hey everyone, Scorp here. Uh, today I'm gonna try to go over what I would put together for a wing B stack. Um, I am doing this because there have been many comments about asking what I'd use for wing beasts, um, and so I put this together. Um, this is a Crimson Sunbird deck. Uh, Crimson Sunbird's pretty strong. Um, 2300's uh, one of the strongest fusions you can make in the game without, like, doing, like, one-off fusions, other than, like, Thousand Dragon. Thousand Dragon, although you can only use Time Laser for that, so... Um, Mavilis is, or, sorry, Crimson Sunbird. Um, you basically just fuse any 1300-plus, um, Wing Beast with any Pyro and you get Crimson Sunbird. Um, so pretty easy to make uh definitely a unfortunately um it doesn't have many power-up cards um and this deck can be optimized to however you want to optimize it in terms of um your your favorite ratios of creatures um i went with uh slightly less eye armors and green cap is and went more towards uh, just bringing out Crimson Sunbirds every turn, um, and Bird Faces, uh, which are absolutely optional. You could just change those into Ryriokus or something. Um, but I don't really like to play Harpy Lady Sisters, um, or Harpy Ladies. Um, this might be an odd thing to say, but um, I honestly think that the Harpy Lady deck is a lot weaker than what else you can do with Wing Beast. Um, the main reason for that is increased movement um, and level cost reduction um, that uh, Wing Beasts really try to utilize. Um, it really lends itself to being extremely aggressive, um, and that would be great if you didn't have to. Like, the problem with Harpy's Pet Dragon is it's level 7. Um, so you'd need 7 summoning power for that. Um, you'd need 5 for Harpy Lady Sisters. Um, to just give it plus 900. Um, then you have your split across two archetypes. Um, you're probably actually better off just using that dragon deck later, so Harpy's Pet Dragon costs 5. Or your other option um, is to fuse Harpy's Pet Dragon using Harpy Ladies um, and, and Dragons, um, which isn't a terrible option because then you can summon it for 3 stars. Um, you still have to bring out 5-star Harpy Lady Sisters, um, and you're probably running Elegant Egotists in your deck um, to make Harpy Lady Sisters with the fusion for a 2. Um, and then after you've summoned out our, all these Harpy Ladies, um, then you have to flip them and uh, empower up your Harpy's Pet Dragon. Um, or your other option is just to make Harpy Lady Sisters and um, go with a whole bunch of female equips, um, but then you have like there aren't many, there aren't any other winged beasts that take female equips, so um, that's not very useful. So that's my issue with the Harpy Lady deck. It's just awkward. Um, there isn't like, hey, this makes the Harpy Lady deck just way better than whatever you can make over here. So that's why I go with the Crimson Sunbird route. Um, you could also do a Punished Eagle route and go with Warriors and instead of Pyros. Um, but Crimson Sunbird's slightly stronger than Punished Eagle. Um, and you don't really get any extra, um, you don't get any extra power-up cards. Uh, unfortunately, you can't use Salamandra on most of the cards in this deck. Um, or most of the Wing Beasts that are actually powerful, so that's kind of a downside, but it doesn't matter nearly enough for me to care. Um, so without further ado, I'll just go through the deck. Um, Crimson Sunbird is the leader. Um, literally any level 5 or 6, um, or actually it has to be a level 6, um, Wing Beast, just so you get the level cost reduction. Um, I didn't realize that level 5 didn't get it. That's just lame. Um, yeah. And there's no level 7 or higher, because if there was, I would absolutely use one. Um which is just a shame, but that's where we're at. Um, so you only get 
minus one level cost, uh, it's not really worth it to use uh, low level uh, because open card isn't that good unless you have uh, extended support range. So, Crimson Sunbird's the leader. Um, just pick your level six uh, Wing Beast. Um, three eye armors. Uh, I just had three extra slots, and these are the best cards I could put in there. Um, they could be Ryokus, they could be literally whatever you want. Um, I was just keeping the deck cost down a little. Um, Spirit of the Books, um, this has an okay effect, um, and you can technically just use this to, if you open two of them, you could play both of them and then flip them, flip both Vukus, and then you have a couple of decently powerful creatures if you brick super hard, so, um, it also works with the fusion, so might as well use Spirit of the Books. Um, three Faith Birds, three Skull Red Birds, um, all of them work with the fusion. Um, Bird Face also works with the fusion, but um, you kind of play it for the effect, although it's only 300 points, so I just fuse it off most of the time. Um, three Dragon Pipers, three Fire Eyes, three Kind of Thomas Souls, um, all of them are here for the fusion. Um, there's 12 Winged Beasts and 9 Pyros um, to make the fusion. That's plenty to make things pretty consistent. Um, Dragon Piper, uh, for some reason this thing's 20 deck cost. I don't know why 2 plus 18 is 20 and then it just doesn't have extra cost added for um, it having an effect, but I'm not going to complain. Um, its effect's not terrible, so um, like sometimes you just play it for the effect. Um, three Fire Eyes, uh, you're probably never going to play Fire Eyes by itself, but um, if you need something to destroy a trap, it can do that. Um, you know, Thomas Soul, uh, this is probably never going to matter, but it, it has an effect, so that's why I used it. Um, Ancient Tree, uh, there's no traps in this deck, so I definitely wanted an Ancient Tree. Um, Mountain, we, we want to change the terrain to Mountain for ourselves. Um, Heavy Storm uh, clears back row. We're going to be playing extremely aggressive, so having a one of card to just get rid of um, all of the traps if you're going for lethal sometimes is nice. Um, if I were going with a more um, deck cost centric deck or higher deck cost deck, I'd probably play more Heavy Storms. Um, solo the pure, uh, it's always nice to have a little healing, just as backup. Um, Windstorm of Itaqua, uh, these are kind of questionable. Um, these could absolutely just get turned into Ruriokus if you're going for higher deck costs. Um, but they power up deck, uh, Wing Beast by 600. Um, they're on the slower end, but uh, sometimes you just need to go slower against some opponents. Um, and if you have to go slower, you might as well have three of those. Um, six equips, and then a goblin fan just to deal with um, Ruryoku if we decide to go after one of the bosses. Um, ideally, you'd uh, tailor your deck and not use uh, goblin fan unless you know your opponent has Ruryoku. But let's be honest. Are any of us actually motivated enough to switch around the deck that much? Uh, also, if you're playing against other people and you guys banned Ryoku or something, do you get rid of this card? Um, so I'm just gonna face up defense bird face. Um, when he plays stuff like that, um, it could absolutely just be, um, that could easily be a trap that he played. Um, so what I'm going to do here, uh, I don't need Soul of the Pier in this matchup. Um, I'm just going to leave a mountain right here, um, just so that he can't hit my deck leader. He's going to move, usually he... Um, so he can move forward before he summons, but he usually will just summon. Um, and I'd prefer him to not summon whatever that was, 
right next to my deck leader. Um, that thing looks terrifying. It's probably a Blue Eyes or a Saint Ryu. Um, it was Blue Eyes. And he's dead. Um, so, eye armor's broken, um, and moving two spaces at a time's broken. Um, that's all we learned out of that duel. Uh, let's do, um, Richard, uh, just because this is a nice open field. Um, he can easily play something that's 2300 or higher. Um, and he'll summon a monster in front of him. Well, um, the AI has drawn a lot of equips today. Um, we're playing Pyros, so we will stun all of his stuff. Uh, let's just do... This. Um, so whatever he played got, what, three equips? Um, so... He probably beats my Crimson Sunbird. Um, it definitely does within his deck leader range. If it's a, like a Garuzis or something, it's 3300. Um, let's see here. Um, and I could absolutely play more aggressive here. Um, ooh, that's unfortunate. He doesn't mirror force you often, but when he mirror forces you, you kind of get sad. Oh well. And that's another trap, that's an acid trap bowl. Um, well, I don't need Goblin Fan in this matchup. Well, he triple equipped the first card and he double equipped the second one. <laughs> Uh, maybe I'll just draw an eye armor here. Okay. Um, that won't be terrible. Um, yeah. This is kind of terrifying. And then I draw the draw card. See how big that first card was? Oh yeah, 3500. And that's outside of his leader range. So I have to remember one of those cards is an acid trap hole. Um, but it doesn't matter right now because of my uh, my ancient tree. But he's probably going to blow up my ancient tree right here, which is fine.
It put his rapid horseman way out of position, so it doesn't really matter. Um, I'd rather not have my Crimson Sunbird just die. Um, I have a Heavy Storm. And then I'm going to move my deck leader here. Um, he does have movement boost for his allies, so it's kind of why I have to be a little bit careful with him. Um, he has better leader abilities than I do for by a, a large margin. So um, we're just gonna. do this because the AI doesn't understand how this game works and that you can just ignore um, stuff like acid trap holes when you know they're there. Um, I could have put him at 100 with Windstorm of Itaqua. Um I could have also just heavy stormed instead of being fancy about it. Um, but, you know, we can just watch the AI lose. Um, this is not me winning the game. This is the AI not knowing how to play the game. Um, otherwise, what else? Who else should we play? Um... I do like having, um, open fields against people, um, with the move two, just to show off how, um, aggressive you can play. Um, you just have to, um, draw well to have that aggression, um, which is something that wing beasts definitely don't don't do the best at. I would much rather summon that next turn. Well, that's a trap. Um, it's probably also a trap. So, bonk. Ooh, sewage in. Um, so here's the part where we get to play super aggressive and, um... Oh, this makes Punish Eagle. It's fine. Um, but as you can see, we get to play incredibly aggressive on opponents. Uh, we 
fought through two traps there and it just didn't matter. Um, yeah, this is kind of what Wing Beasts like to do, is go extremely aggressive. Um, it's actually really annoying um, to play against if you're if you're trying to stop um, somebody playing this aggressive against you, like PvP style, um, if you go second as a control deck, you're just kind of dead. Um, you kind of have you have to basically play some card that goes two for one with your opponent's cards, um, and then somehow make it so that they stop just uh, bullishly hitting you. Um, I'm not playing a um, monster first turn because he's got like a 50-50 shot of actually just playing Dark Hole. And I don't feel like dealing with that. Um, it's honestly probably better, better to just play Mountain than to take the 2500 damage. Um, even if he could hit me here, I know his AI is, AI is not smart enough to actually hit me. Oh, it is. Ow. Okay. Me. Wow. Okay. So if um anyone wants an example of how bad this game's AI is, there there is a great clip for you. Should I take 2,800 free damage? Nah, I'll pass. As you can see, um, playing super aggressive against the AI is extremely effective, especially because the AI uh, doesn't like to deal 3,000 damage to you when it has the opportunity. Yeah, not not great. Um, let's see here. Anyone else with it? Oh, let's just show that we can outwing beast the wing beast person in the game. Um, she has a very interesting deck, uh, Princess of Sewer guys, to make uh, Punished Eagle as well as be like the female equipped targets. Um, yeah, that's an opening hand. Sure is. Can the AI play something bigger? No. That might actually have been bigger. Just didn't want to have a fight, huh? So, um... I'm gonna just chase her down. Um, if she actually wins this fight against the Crimson Sunbird, um, she'd actually lose the game. Um, she still loses because I can just get rid of my Crimson Sunbird for um, literally any creature and she loses. So, um, yeah, super aggressive decks when there's not a Labyrinth Field right in front of you. Um, super hard to deal with. 
especially when um, you have bonus on the field that they're playing on. <coughs> so, um, yeah. That's five full duels, and we got those done in like 15 minutes. Um, yeah. This is just a testament to how um, really fast um, Wing Beasts can get through opponents. Um, but, like, <clears throat> they kind of just do this to, like, everything. Um, even when there's not Mountain Field, when there's going to be this Labyrinth tile here, which isn't going to slow me down too much, but it'll slow me down. Um, there's a reason Clovis put those in. Um, it's so this strategy is nerfed a little bit, which I completely agree with. Um, this is absolutely absurd how fast you can get across this field with the moving two spaces with the deck leader. Um, honestly, if all of the things in the game, it's probably the thing that should be banned the most. figured that was coming, so I didn't really want to just, um, um this is kind of dangerous, but I think I'm okay with it. He can only hit me with one creature. And he chose the one that he didn't power up, so that's nice. Oh, he played a thousand dragon with an equip. Um, I think I'm just gonna go for, um, like, go for lethals. And accept the fact that there's ways that I lose this game. Oh, actually I lost the game anyways. I didn't think that through. Whoops. I should have just killed the winged dragon. Oh well, we'll do that one real again real quick. Even the losses are super quick, so. Well guys, the AI actually found lethal. This is almost a first. Um, if I had just killed the winged dragon, that would have been a long, annoying duel, so it's okay. Um, okay. Can I please draw fire? And now after all of this, now I'm gonna have um, a long game too, so this will be fun.
I'm just worried that the first card he played was a parrot with two equips. Um. And I don't want to just straight up put all my eggs in one basket if I can help it. Um, that's a Winged Dragon Guardian of the Fortress number two back there. Oh, it was a parrot with two equips. I forget if the red one's number one or number two. Not that it matters much, but... Uh, we'll go ahead and... I figured there was a trap, that's why that was still in attack mode. Oh, that's a new Atori. I forgot he even played that card. Uh, Joey's AI is extremely aggressive. Goblin Secret Remedy, huh? And Eye Armor is extremely good on Tune Terrain to finish duels, so that's nice. So, um, that's a much better showcase of the Wing Beast deck than, um, than the previous duel, so glad to actually have had that opportunity. Um, that was probably the only interesting duel out of all seven of them. Anyway, thanks everybody for watching, and have a nice day.